Okay, so let's get down to the pronoun system of Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, right here we see, right here we see a little chart that I made with the actually really used pronoun system currently employed in normal Brazilian Portuguese as spoken by the bulk of the population, including the educated and less educated, on number uh, a number of formality levels, levels of. Um, formality and politeness uh, it's, it's quite distant from the official pronoun system that you can see in normal grammar books the ones that we learn at school here in Brazil the one the system that they use in Portugal which is, which is also quite distinct from um, the classical Portuguese system which I'm talking about a little bit uh, uh, later um, the Portuguese system, of course, is uh, similar to the, the one that you find in uh, Spanish or Italian or French. But uh, the Brazilian Portuguese system specifically involved a bunch of features, a number of features that distinguish it from um, standard literary Portuguese. This is not the literary language, this is not the language that we learn in school. That's why most Brazilians are incapable of teaching Brazilian Portuguese, not only the pronouns, but many features present in the grammar of Brazilian Portuguese, in pronunciation, in syntax, in word formation, word usage, pronoun system, verbal system, agreement system. A lot of those features, uh, Brazilians can't teach them because we don't learn them at school. We learn uh, an idealized classical literary language, literary modern Brazilian Portuguese, which is quite similar to literary Portuguese from Portugal, European Portuguese. But the language that I'm showing here is the actual language that as a linguist, I established, this is the only time I've ever seen a, a, a pronoun, a table of pronouns of Brazilian Portuguese that actually is accurate according to reality, not according to a literary ideal that you only use when you're writing an essay for the university or some other written material, formal written material. This is actually the actual language. So you see that, um, first of all, you should, if you're learning Brazilian Portuguese, you should uh, take this table and uh, copy it. Try to do a, a print screen of it and put, put it somewhere or print it and glue it on your wall or something because you have to have the, the, the pronoun system very clear on your mind. But uh, <clears throat> let's um, analyze this. We have a, a base form, which is a subject form, subject base form, which is also could also be called a stressed form, the based, basic form of pronouns, typically used as a subject of verbs or uh, even as standalone pronouns uh, have eu which is i on uh, the second person have tu which is very informal so you shouldn't treat people with tu unless you are like college buddies or you like very very intimate young people talking to each other you know, on very informal levels so i recommend a learner a foreigner who's in brazil speaking to people on average to talk to people as você Okay, there's also a, the term uh, o senhor, a senhora, which is used for elderly people or more respectable people in very formal situations. Brazil is typically not that formal, especially if you're a foreigner. People will not freak out if you don't treat them as o senhor. But o senhor, I'm not even including there because it's actually more like a noun than a pronoun. So the second person varies between tu, which is informal, and você, which uh, has its... Um, alternate form C, which is whose uh, usage will be, will be explained later. Um, você is more like, um, not, not too formal, not too informal, so it's ideal for you to memorize. Uh, in the third person, have ele, ele, and ela. Notice the difference in the, in, the, in, the, in the openness of the first vowel. Ele, ele, he, ela, ela open the first ele is a closed a and the second pronoun the, f the feminine pronoun is ela she ele he ela she in the first person plural the we pronoun we have nós which is a little formal and we have a gente which is a little bit more informal so you have to uh, know exactly your your intonation at the moment as well, what situation you're at so you're going to use either a gente in more informal, colloquial situations and nós in slightly more formal pronunciations or uh, statements. Vocês is the word, the plural of você, you. There used to be a vos pronoun like 500 years ago. Nobody's been using it since uh, Brazil was discovered. 
So, um, uh, it should only have says, it's only you in the plural. And uh, you have the third person plural as well, just add S to eles, eles, which is a they masculine, and elas, eles, elas, eles is they masculine, and elas is they feminine. Okay, there is no gender neutral pronoun in the plural like they in English. But then we have the object form. Um, uh, for for me, me is just like English, but it's, but it's pronounced me, me, which sometimes is pronounced me. Ele me viu, he saw me, ele me chamou, me, ele me. Because the vowel E usually is uh, contracted to E in the pronunciation when unstressed. So me is pronounced me in most, most, most cases. Uh, then we have T, which also pronounced T, T. Uh, eu te chamei, I called you. Um, there is also, in some, in some cases, the, a dative form, which is to you. I gave something to you, we can, which can be, uh, in the second person, can be ti as well, just like in the first person. The me form is both a uh, direct object and indirect object. But there is lhe, the lhe form, which you probably know from the other Latin languages, le in Spanish, is to him, to he, or to you, because many third person pronouns were adapted for second person usage. In polite speech, so lie is like for second person and third person, a polite, uh, a dative, indirect object, something that's given to you, something that's provided to somebody. Um, for the object, you have nos, nos, okay. For the weak dative, the, this this clitics that I'm showing here, this is the clitic, accusative clitic and, and dative clitic. Those all always come before the verb, rarely after the verb. After the verb is more like a a a literary, uh, literary usage from Portugal, from Portugal, from Portuguese models. The Brazilians seldom use the, the, the clitics, the clitic pronouns, the weak clitic pronouns after the vowel, at the verb. It always be, always before. So nus, without the accent, there's no acute accent there. There's nos is we, but nus is us, and uh, that comes also before the verb. It's a clitic. There's no clitic for a gente. A gente is always a full pronoun that can be used as an object, but as a, as a strong object, which is the, the other, the other uh, column, which we're going we're to talk about them uh, later. And then there's a re reflexive pronoun, se. Si, pronounce si in actual pronunciation. Ele si viu, he saw himself. Ele si viu in the third person, okay? In, in the second person, the other persons, a second and first person, it is me and ti. Eu me vi, eu te vi, uh, eu tu te viste. Yeah, ou, você, ou, ou você se viu, you don't use the to anymore, so you say você se viu, você pronoun, the, the você pronoun uses the third person grammar, the forms that it requires are from a borrowed from the third person, there is no conjugation for você. And then we have a, a strong prepositional form of the pronouns, me, these typically go after prepositions only, so para mim, a mim. Contra mim, for me, that's to me, against me, contra mim, contra mim. Observe that the final M is only a nasal twang in the end of the vowel. It's not a full M with the lips. No, no, not mim, it's mim, mim, as if it's an NG, mim, mim. Contra mim, para mim, de mim, of me. Uh, the two form has a ti, para ti, contra ti. But você is used just você. Você never changes. Contra você, against you. Para você, para você. For you, to you. Ele and ela also don't, don't change. Ele e ela um, typically don't change. Observe that, I uh, forgot to talk about it, the first column, the third person pronoun objects are no longer used in, in Brazilian Portuguese. Okay, So you, you use only the full pronouns after the, the verb. Uh, the, 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 the old uh, clitic for the third person, which used to be O and A, are no longer in usage unless it's very formal. So typically we don't, uh, we don't use it anymore unless it's... Uh, I'm talking about mostly informal colloquial language here. Um, for the first person, there is a gente and nós. So pra gente, for us, or pra nós for us, and uh, para vocês, vocês, same thing, para vocês, contra vocês, against you, third person plural, the same thing, contra eles, contra elas, 
uh, in the preposition form of the reflexive in the, in the third person and also in the second person você form is a si contra si ele lutou contra si he fought against himself uh, and there, there there's the possessive adjectives that indicate person the personal possessive adjectives here I give you the masculine and feminine form uh, some of them change there's a, the, the teu and tua in the second person are for the, the tu form that's too informal also you don't say teu you say seu uh, which is more polite seu is borrowed from the third person so that, that's why there's a confusion so in the third person you can use seu but to distinguish from its second person usage you can also say dele which is of him and dela of her but that's put after the noun so seu quarto means his or her room okay could it could also mean your room to uh, undo that uh, ambiguity you can say o quarto dele the room of him that is his room okay uh for the first person plural our that's nosso no feminine is nossa nosso nosso quarto or you can say da gente as a prepositional phrase o quarto da gente the room of us the room of the people, which is us. Uh, for the second person plural, you can use seu e sua also, but you can use de vocês. Some people still use the archaic vosso, but that's a little formal, but it's still it's still alive, very almost almost died. It's almost gone, it's almost extinct, but some people still use vosso precisely because there is no clear way to clear indicate that something belongs to you people. Um, so if you use seu, seu is so confusing, you know, so many persons have seu that some people still use vosso in formal situations, of course, but it's still a little used, rarely, by Brazilians, uh, although formally only. Uh, for the third person plural, deles, delas, also put after the noun. We're going to see all of these pronouns very clearly after this screen. Let's jump to another screen here to see practical. Uh, so the second person, just like I said, changes in formality. The second person has two and there is você, which is sometimes shortened to se only. Tu is very informal, very like almost like a slang form. It's uh, you don't treat a person you don't know uh, or, or an older person, maybe a kid, okay, a kid, a teenager. Uh, as, as tu, tu is very informal. Você is perfect. Just use você, okay. Forget about the others. You're gonna hear, hear the others, but you're, going, you're, going, you're not gonna use necessarily the others. Unless you're in a very polite setting and you want to use o senhor, o senhor, a senhora. O senhor is masculine, a senhora is feminine. And they have a plural, os senhores, as senhoras. Uh, that can be used with a third person morphology to indicate a very polite uh, second person, to refer to a person. O senhor quer algo? O senhor gostaria de algo? O senhor está satisfeito? Are you satisfied? So, in most of our course here, we're going to stick with você, forget about the others, for the most part, even though some of the two morphology does pop up in more formal, complementing você. It does mingle with você on many levels. Uh, eu te vejo, for example, when I, when, when I say the you as, a, as an object of a verb, you can use te, and that's also informal. It's less informal than you use tu as a subject. So, you can say eu te vejo, E eu vejo você. Eu vejo você sounds a little more, more polite, okay? So, so uh, you have uh, two ways of saying the you as an object of a verb. Te, usually pronounced ti, eu te vejo, eu te vejo, eu vejo você. Which is, I would want to recommend for most people using você after the verb. The ti is a clitic. Go back to the table. See, those clitic, clitics means that are, those are short words that are glued to the verb in, in, in Brazilian Portuguese the clitics always appear before the verb that's why the T here is before in English I say I see you in, in Portuguese if you're using the clitics that, that I show in the table, the, those clitics are always placed immediately after the verb and no word can intervene between the clitic and the verb, not even the, the negative word like no so you, you know, I don't see you is eu não te vejo não Comes before that, eu, não, I don't, te vejo, see you, which is you see. Uh, now, for you to, when I, I'm talking about the first person as an object, you saw me, você me viu. 
Você me viu. There's only one way to say você me viu. There's no other pronoun. You have to say use me before the verb. Okay, some people use eu after the verb. Você viu eu. Okay, sometimes you see the eu used as an object of the verb separately. However, that's very uh, crude. That's very um, almost like uneducated and rural or some um, for people who have absolutely no education. Although that sometimes happens in colloquial speech, that's not unusual for that to happen. But it sounds quite crude. Never use it. Você me viu. You saw me. Uh, this, the, the, the você subject can, can be reduced to se. Se me viu. Se me viu. You saw me. Yeah? I can make it a question. Se me viu. Did you see me? Okay, question in Portuguese is just made by intonation. There's no change in grammar. Se me viu is a statement. You saw me. Se me viu is a question. Did you see me? Or you can say tu me viu. Or tu me viste. Viste is the old form in the verb. I'm going to talk, talk about verbs later. So you, don't, you won't understand the verb here. But tu me viu, uh, or tu me viste, tu me chamou, tu me chamou, you called me. Tu me chamou, or in classical Portuguese, be tu me chamaste, you called me. You can also, você me chamou, você me chamou, você me viu. Uh, prepositional usage, use the strong form, the second column, which is the, the strong prepositional form of pronouns, me, um presente para mim, a gift for me, um presente para você, in this case you cannot use você, the short form você, se, para se, okay, the short form can only use, as, can, can only occur as a subject of the verb when it's unstressed, okay, we're gonna take a look at that a little bit deeper later, but the subject, the short form se, can only occur as a, as a subject, and when it stands alone, without any qualifications around it, without any focus words. Se viu. Um presente para ti, ok? Um presente para você e um presente para ti, both mean the same thing, a gift for you. But para ti sounds more informal, because ti is the uh, prepositional form of tu, which is ex exceedingly inf informal. Ele me viu. He saw me. Here again we have the me. Ele, but the subject is third person now. Ele me viu. Ele te viu. He saw you. Ele viu você. He saw you. Uh, polite, you can also use senhor as, a, as an object. Ele, vi, ele viu o senhor. Ela viu. Elas viram os senhores. So they, feminine, saw you, gentlemen. That's a polite form. First person plural. We, us. Okay, you have nós and a gente, as you saw it. So, nós estamos aqui. We are here. Uh, there's a colloquial pronunciation for that, but that, we're going to see that in the verb. That's a verb estar, which is to be, to be in, to be uh, temporarily, like Spanish. Uh, nós estamos aqui. Yeah? But uh, nós itself is a little bit formal, so kind of a contradiction to use nós informally. That's why most, most Brazilians, when they want to sound informal, they use a gente for us. A gente está aqui. But a gente requires a third person singular form, just like he, he, she, it form. So, a gente tá aqui. A gente está aqui. That's a more formal way of pronouncing the full enunciation of the words. But in actual, quick, uh, fast, everyday speech patterns, you see a gente tá aqui. 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 Uh, of course, colloquially in Brazil, especially among the less educated people who want to sound like more slang-like and... Uh, very informal, or people who have no education, actually have no education, say, nós tá aqui, ou a gente tamo aqui. Sometimes people use a gente with the first person plural form, which is, sounds very crude to most Brazilians, but it does happen in colloquial speech, especially among the lower layers of society. Uh, you plural, vocês. No, no, no problem there, vocês. It's just like uh, você in the plural, gains an S in the end. And just like você, it's, uh, it, can, it has a reduced form seis, which can only occur as a subject unstressed of the verb. Vocês estão aqui. Colloquially, seis estão aqui. Yeah? As an object, it can only be vocês. There's no short form. Eu vi vocês. Okay, the possessive can be sua, which is sua, seu, is a possessive that goes for second and third person, singular and plural. It's all over the place. Anything that's not mine or, or ours can be sua, seu. A mala de vocês, that the suitcase of you. So in that case, you use the, the pronoun with the possessive preposition de. The suitcase of you. 
a gift for you, um presente para vocês, a gift to you, é um presente para vocês. Uh, third person pronouns, ele está aqui, ele está aqui, but quickly it's pronounced, ele está aqui, ele está aqui, ele está aqui. Eu chamei ele, I called him, ok? In old, old, old Portuguese, that was, pro, that, that, that was prohibited, you say that eu o chamei, there, was a, there used to be a, uh, there still is, we will we'll use it in the formal, formal uh, literary Brazilian Portuguese, when we want to sound very formal and very polite and very uh, academic, we can say eu o chamei, ok? Uh, ele chamou ela. In, in literary Portuguese, ele a chamou. Ele a chamou, but that's, um, that's, that's not what we use in everyday speech patterns, ok? That doesn't sound like a mummy, if you say that. So, eu chamei ele, ele chamou ela, he called her. Eu chamei ela. So, the ele and ela simply do not change a subject or object of verb, direct subject or object, or even prepositional. So, the third person pronouns are like nouns. They don't change at all. You can use them in any position. Você já chamou ele? Have you called him already? Did you call him already? Já means already. Okay? Você já chamou ele? 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 Did you call him already? Uh, cadê ele? Cadê is a, mean, a word that means... It's a very interesting word. It's a word that means where is. It contains the verb itself. You don't need a verb when you use it. Cadê ele? Cadê ele? Você já chamou? So when you already have the pronoun stated before, and the context is clear, you can even use the verb without the pronoun as an object. You, can, you don't have to say, uh, where is he? Where is he? Have you called him? Did you call him? Okay, in Portuguese, in English, you have to repeat, where is he? Did you call him? But in Portuguese, if the pronoun has been stated, if it's clear or the name of the person has been stated just uh, shortly before this, the sentence, you can leave the verb alone without any, in the third person, you can leave it alone without any object. Você já chamou? Okay, the third person is simply left out. Okay, the, um, that's something when Brazilians learn English, they have a lot of trouble using this pronouns because they simply use the verb without any objects. That's something that's possible in Portuguese, but in Spanish, even Spanish, Italian, French, that's not possible. And, and prepositional, easy. É um presente para ela. A gift to her, for her. Eu trabalho com elas. I work with them, feminine. Eu trabalho com elas, com elas. Eu trabalho com elas. And there's the dative form of the third person pronoun. The third person pronoun, as, as I said, can be used in the second person as well. Uh, there, there, there used to be a polite, a polite uh, tra trans transplant of third person pronouns to the, to the second person. It has the same origin as the use of your, your majesty to refer to a person with respect. In, in the case, a, a queen or a king. Uh, that, 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 that transfer third word third, third word um, forms to second form is something that still is valid in most Latin language, not only not only in Brazilian Portuguese, also in European Portuguese, in Spanish, Italian. So eu lhe dei, so that as I gave to him or to her or to you, uh, depending on the context, okay. But originally only third person. Eu lhe dei, I gave to him. Even though that's not mandatory, you can also say. With, say it with a preposition. Eu dei para ele um presente. Eu dei um presente para ele. Para eles, to him. Oh, para ela, to her. Uh, in northern Brazil, especially, people use lhe as a direct object. So I saw you can be eu lhe vi. Instead of eu te vi or eu vi você, you can say eu lhe vi. Uh, eu vi o senhor. Also is polite, but eu lhe vi is a typical northern Brazilian. If you go to maybe Recife and uh, Maceió and Natal, you're going to hear a lot of that. People using lhe as a direct object to sound polite. Very typical use of northern Brazil uh, in general. 